The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets catching a little bit of a bounce, putting things on a five-minute basis. Yesterday, we accelerate to lows at about 2 p.m. Eastern time. You were down at 42.60 in the S&Ps. We popped towards the end of the day, volatility to the downside to close things out. Nonetheless, you look at the volatility, even after coming right into the close, make sure we're all set here. Still need a chart. Shame on me. Do you? I guess you do. Hold on one second for me. Let me get you that chart. We'll get that up there. Throw that chart up there. There we go. So back again. Let's do it again. Checking out the S&Ps yesterday to action. Down to lows at about 2 p.m. Eastern time, 42.60. We climb higher into 3 o'clock. We trade lower into about literally 10 minutes prior to the close. We close things out about 43.15 this morning. We're trading about three quarters percent the positive. NASDAQ 100, we're more than a percentage in the positive right now. 14,015. Yesterday, you were approaching 13,700. Dow up 228 points, 33,753. You got Bitcoin catching a bid off the lows of yesterday. Bitcoin down to 36,340 early pre market yesterday. We just had a 39,000 handle in Bitcoin. Crude backing off. Some lighter tensions, maybe, uh, excuse me, lighter. Let me get the, the headline. Sanctions, soft sanctions. Uh, initials, the West's initial Russia penalties over the Ukraine seen limited. I would say so. What was it? Five banks out there and three rich Russians that were sanctioned by the U.S., I believe. It's a pretty slow start to the sanctions. The market taking that and giving a little bid. Crude pulling back from the highs it had yesterday of $95. We'll talk to our man Teddy Kegstad at 40 past the hour. We'll talk a little commodities. We'll talk some Forex. We jump over to notes and bonds this morning. Well, the gold contract first, 1902, catching a little bit even in the last few minutes. You see that spike in gold at 815 up to 1906. And now we get to notes and bonds. Giving back some of the run that you had. Quite the volatility in the notes and bonds. We're talking about a yield right now, 1.974%. You put this thing just on a 10-day, 30-minute. Man, you're talking about trading from about 125.17 up a full point and a half to 127.09. We back down to, yeah, we're at basically right near lows, 126.09, that is the 10 year, and putting it back on a five minute chart, you were back to 126.05, but you gotta think about yesterday early, we had yields like 1.83%, 1.83 after being at 2.06, something like that, huge swings in the note and the bond, and we take a look at the VIX, a slight reprieve from the highs yesterday, back to 27.85, we were above 31 at market lows at about 2 p.m. Eastern time yesterday. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks with action. We'll kick things off with Lowe's. Lowe's, solid earnings. You're up about $8, trading at 223. You closed yesterday at 215. We take a look at the long-term chart on Lowe's, backing down from about 263. So again, we're gonna open at about 225 on Lowe's. This thing, a low of $60 during COVID. You came into COVID at about 120. You're still going to be almost double that price point at 225 today. And we jump over to the headline on Lowe's. Sales beat increase in full year outlook. Retailer sees favorable signs in a housing market fueling growth. CEO says demand from contractors led to the forecast boost. Maybe that's what's hurting Home Depot there. Interesting action. Now, Home Depot, HD yesterday, they really accelerate lower. I'm going to put this on a 15 minute on their earnings. They're catching a lift. They're probably just catching a lift with the market, though, from 316 to 319. Yesterday, you accelerated from 335 on the open. You were at 345 as of the close two days ago. Uh, huge negative action on Home Depot to 312, 319. Now, you take a look at Home Depot. I mean, you're talking about trading down from 420. You just lost $100 on Home Depot prices down to 316. We were trading at a price point of 292 back a year and a half ago, practically. August of 2020, let alone you came into the pandemic at about 250. Home Depot trading at 370. 
And if you recall, Lowe's, they're basically double the price point that they were coming into the pandemic. So percentage-wise, Lowe's beating, and recently on the earnings, Lowe's beating. And if they start getting some of those contractors, that is the core of Home Depot's business. I mean, that's the reason why Home Depot, and I don't see them ceding the lead anytime soon, but you're talking about Home Depot, a company valued at $333 billion. You're talking about Lowe's right now, a company valued at $150 billion, uh, less than half the size of Home Depot. All right, what other headlines do we have out there? Activision, they're going to delay the next year's planned Call of Duty game 2023. It's going to be the first without a mainline release in 20 years. I wonder how that's going to play into the Microsoft deal to take them over. Studio behind now delayed game to help with free to play title. Uh, they're going to delay the big Call of Duty game that's been planned for the next year. The first time the franchise will be out will be without an annual mainline release in 20 years. They're pushing off the release after a recent entry into the sale uh, series failed to meet expectations. And execs uh, believe they're introducing new versions too rapidly. Looks like they can't do one release a year. The decision not related to Activision's agreement to sell itself to Microsoft. I'm sure they didn't want to come out with that news, worrying that uh, that could throw something, a wrench in that potential deal. Jumping over to Activision Blizzard, ATVI. Barely lower a little bit. Remember, this equity, I believe it's $95 that they're going to get purchased by Microsoft if that deal goes through. You're probably going to see this thing be in the middle of a range until that deal comes through. Was really, it's close. I went over it before. I mean, if you're getting $95 if this deal goes through, you're gaining almost $14 in profit. And if the deal falls through, you're probably trading back to 65 or a little bit lower. Point being, you're almost risking one to make one. It's almost a 50-50 shot. This market thinks this deal gets done or it doesn't. Uh, nonetheless, Activision, maybe it goes a little bit lower now that they are going to miss out on the release of their mainline game for the first time in 20 years. Yeah, working on other projects, they're going to try and spin what they can, but they did not want that to happen. Delay will have a massive effect on the industry. Every fall since 2005, they put out a new premium entry in the lucrative shooting series. Amazing. Every year since 25, 2005. Call of Duty games regularly top yearly sales chart, 400 million units. 400 million units. <sighs> Video games, watch out. Uh, there's Activision. We jump over to Microsoft shares. They're up about three bucks with the market. Let's check out some of the other FANG stocks this morning. We got Amazon trained at 3,036. Quite the pullback even recently on Amazon from 3,200 over the last few days or so. We jump over to Apple. Apple shares 164. Remarkable, right? You just barely clipped that $3 trillion mark. Sometimes it's just too easy, folks. And then you get the sell-off on Apple, makes it to 182 and change, 182.94. You're trading 164.32 now on Apple. We jump over to Tesla shares. 836 from 821, you talk about pullbacks. Man, oh man, seems all but natural, folks. You may get a pullback to what, 650? You may get the full pullback here because you're at 821. This daily bar, I have a low of 801. And you're talking about a low of 792 back on January 28th. Let me put this on a little shorter term time frame. Yeah, that was the low yesterday of 801. We're already $35 above that price level. Uh, but man, testing that low, we'll see if we get a bounce. Maybe that's the full pullback, as in it goes from 820 or 800 to 1243, gives it back all the way to 800. You test that area from January. Uh, but boy, not much strength right now in Tesla shares, trading at 836 down from 1200 bucks on a couple occasions. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back after the break. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hanks. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. 
tfnn.com. Educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TESS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TESS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, positive by 34 points. NASDAQ right now, positive by 159. Dow, positive by 245. Interesting, when you get the type of volatility, man, for the first time in a while, I'm waking up in the morning, I'm opening my phone for the Thinker Swim app, and I'm saying, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, volatility, folks. We got the VIX right now trading at 2786. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hicks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market on the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hicks, Tom White, they walk you through the day's market action, bring on some great guests. They talk about some uh, hypothetical trades, talking about options, talking defined risk. Kevin Hicks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, you know, uh, what? here's what I think. Coming off of the last few days in the weekend and yesterday's trade, you know, and you look at the markets today, and they're green across the board, right? I mean, the Nasdaq's up more than one percent. You got the others up between seven and eight tenths. Get comfortable being uncomfortable is what your viewers should do because this isn't over by any stretch of the imagination. You still got a VIX sitting around the twenty-eight level, even though it's down today. So. Um, I don't know about you, Tommy, but I don't think it's over. And I think we're right in the middle of this, and it'll play out over time. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's not opportunities, right? It was Yesterday was a true roller coaster of a day, right? Down big overnight, over m m Monday night, all the way back to unchanged and up to start the day, and then right back down, and then a late-day rally that, trim some of those losses so you know that is in in this is going to sound a little morbid tommy but that's a trader's dream right there those are the days that you never want the closing bell to ring because uh big down all the way up back down and up that's like, like i said those are the days that dad came home real happy but tired but real happy tommy it is remarkable, man, just to even state the type of volatility. And depending on 
you know, your trading strategy, Kevin, we're getting moves that are so dramatic, almost no matter what you're looking at, even the note and bond market, right? The, the swing in the yields that we're getting on a just very short term basis. Uh, you could be trading both sides of this market. You could just be on one side or the other and be profitable if you set your risk reward, um, you know, however you have your system. But it's definitely possible with the moves you're getting, man, when you're talking about 1%, 2%, et cetera. We had a huge move at Home Depot yesterday, Kevin, to the downside. Today, we got a decent beat on lows. They're trading a little bit higher to 223. Um, you talk about volatility, man. It's interesting how many variables are in play, Kevin, right? I mean, I was just reading a great article about China, about the ports over there and how difficult it is still with some of the chips, uh, excuse me, the ships. Uh, I think if they get like one positive case, they have to quarantine the whole ship. We know that these cases are everywhere right now, especially with Omicron. And then, of course, we have rate hikes, right? We get CPI data March 10th. We get probably a rate hike to, to be easy on the verbiage in March, if not two. Um, and they're coming fast and furious. It's a pretty interesting time to put it lightly, you know, coming out of a pandemic, there's not many comparable situations in our lifetimes. But it is interesting how hard it is for some of these analysts, which is why there's so much volatility to peg the value of these companies when man, the force is in play right now, Kevin, it's like quite a storm uh, going on in terms of rates, supply shortages, inflation like we've never seen before. Um, and an interesting time, to say the least. We jump from that. We still got some companies with earnings, Kevin. What's going on at the program coming up at 12 today? Well, today we'll look at, we have a pretty interesting uh, group of names that we're looking at today. Alibaba in the A block, and then like Foley will do presentation on eBay. Remember eBay? They're still a company <laughs> and still working. And then in the C block, we'll look at Probably Moderna, but we basing on how things stop, we may look at some of the other names. The the, the C block is still in discussions right now. It depends how these stocks open or any, any news. It. But right now, definitely Alibaba and eBay to start the show. I mean, some great companies, man. The whole China uh, aspect of where these companies might find a bid. Baba, man, down from 319 in, what was that, 2020? Yeah, late 2020, just a one-way trip down to about 108. Uh, China's economy probably going to be around at some point, whether those companies uh, are able to operate in terms of profitability for uh, shareholders, a different story probably. And Moderna, I mean, it's just, Kevin, I'm looking around at this market, and, you know, the S&Ps are – Maybe back to near their 20 day was a lot of talk. You're down, you know, 450 bucks, maybe 480 bucks from the highs on the spy. But Moderna in particular, I mean, you look at some amazing companies, Kevin, the pullback, right? Companies like Zoom, companies like Roku, we all know them. But even companies like Target, man, I'm looking down from 268 to 196. Companies like Home Depot, down from 420 to 316, um, let alone the companies like the travel stocks, Boeing under 200 bucks. It's pretty interesting right now that we have some high flyers. And, you know, I myself, you know, I love to trade. I love watching the program for options. But I also have an investment portfolio for longer term investments. And it's pretty interesting. We're getting back to some levels that might be a little interesting. I mean, look at DraftKings I've been talking about recently. You got a little bit of a bid, could be a dead cap bounce. But DraftKings, Kevin, we're only talking about a company valued at six to seven billion dollars um, in the context. If you think it's going to succeed in the longer term, what, what's your take on some of these growth companies that have just gotten decimated, for lack of a better term? You know, it's funny. Someone just asked me about DraftKings the other day, and my response was, number one, I'd be worried about competition in those names because there is competition, and that'll hurt their margins. That doesn't mean the, you know these companies aren't can't be successful and won't be, but the main thing, I and, and my, my point there was, there are so many great companies that have been beat up and, from, and, and, and are down such big percentages that that may be a good play to play DraftKings. But there's others that you, you just mentioned Target. Target's got a 14 PE right now, right? Even Facebook has a, a 14 under a 15 PE. I mean, there's some really good companies that make a whole bunch of money that are trading at some pretty low levels in terms of price earnings. So uh, in terms of value, boy, there's a, it's getting to be a long list, Tommy, of names that, that you can look at. So in a market like this where so many stocks are down, you want to pick the best one, not just, you know, 
uh, one that you think might go up. You want one that will go up the most. It's a great point because you don't have unlimited resources to, to, to be everywhere, of course. So you want the best one. And yeah, man, some some amazing companies like you talked about. Facebook, similar deal, man. 202. I don't know where the bottom is, but if you believe that company is around in three or five years, you know, they I think they just made $40 billion and they're valued at six or seven hundred billion. Right. That's a multiple. My brain can understand, Kevin, versus some of the multiples some of these companies deal with. They're trading at how many times revenue, how many times growth. And yeah, they'll probably get there in the future, but we're seeing the valuations and how they can change in the likes of Zoom, Roku, um, to name a couple. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, man. The education, as always, we'll be watching at 12 noon today. All right. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Always a pleasure, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in 12 noon Eastern time, Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hanks, Tom White. Outstanding programs. Uh, when we have the volatility we have right now, like Kevin was just talking about, folks, it is a trader's dream. Because when this market was on a one-way trip, folks, from lower prices to higher prices, and you had a VIX that was floating at about 11 to 12, I mean, it's hard to remember that that was the case. But backing things up, can I get that far? There's your five-year weekly. I mean, you're talking about a VIX that barely got to 20 occasionally. You're talking about a VIX that was in the 11s and the 12s on most occasions. You're talking about a VIX that hit 856 in 2017. Not so much the case right now. Stay tuned. Right back to the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. We're looking at a daily on the S&P. You're down to 4332. Interesting, right? Now, markets positive right now at 32 points, but you're at a critical level in terms of lower prices right now. Not that long ago, folks, 13 days ago, you were up at a price point in the S&P. is pushing almost 4600. We're down about 200 and let's be exact here, 200 and 10 point, no, 260 points from that price level in 13 days. You're pushing the lows we had from late January. And interesting, you're pushing the area that this market took off from for the final quarter of last year. Critical area in terms of this market, because you break below there, it seems like that was a one-way ship trip from May up until about 43 to 4,400 where you chopped around. Very possible when you break below that level, considering that's where we found a bounce late January. That's where we found a bounce also in October. I mean, remember when things pulled back from 45, 48 down to 4,200, that was where the talk began. Oh, man, everything. We've had quite a year. We've had quite a year following 2020. No, the market roared higher to finish out the final year from 4,271 to 4,800. And then now we're sitting right back at that same price level, giving up all of the final gains of the quarter at 4,808. So jumping around, uh, Kevin mentioned Target after I mentioned Target and some great points. Folks, if you're looking to get in Target, you could at least look to scale in here. You're back to a 382 of the entire move higher from the COVID lows. You trade from about $97. Where are we at? Where's the low there? 90 bucks up to 268. You're right at the 382. Now, putting this back on a daily for a second, zooming in on that full run, uh, you're basically back to the 382, and that's also going to correlate to, you know, an areas of resistance become areas of support potentially. Yes, it can go through that area, okay? Uh, I'd potentially look at scaling in here. Maybe you save some, some to scale in at the 50% and the 618 if we go lower. But you're right at a 382. You're right in an area that we had resistance. You're right in an area that maybe is also turned into support. You're at the 382. You've pulled back from 270 almost. You're trading under 200, and you have a PE that is understandable uh, to the human mind. As in, I said to Kevin, you know, you have Facebook that made $40 billion. Now they're going to spend a lot of money and that's the worry. One, one of my friends said, Instagram alone is worth X amount of hundreds of billions of dollars. All right. If Facebook just decided to spin off Instagram and they never would because, uh, the sum of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts when they're using all that data together. But if they were to just spin off Instagram, that company alone, I forget what it was. It was like, you know, 200 billion, 100, 150 billion, $300 billion alone. Uh, I think 300 billion, maybe that company would be worth. So that means maybe 400 billion. So that means Facebook and everything else is being valued at like, 200 billion or 250 billion okay yeah and look at look at look at look at what we just got facebook 205 you're trading 201 yesterday i don't know where this one stops folks it could go lower but you're talking about almost back at covid lows i mean it looks like nothing on this chart from 384 to 205 facebook with the multiples now i mentioned target uh they were just bringing up robolux in the den now, this one is not a multiples case because uh, I wonder what their let's let's see what their multiples are trading at right now, according to Thinkorswim. Yeah, I mean, they lose money. So their earnings per share is negative. So you can't run uh, a P.E. on a negative company. OK, but you're just down from 141. You're trading at 48. The company now has a market valuation of 23 billion. What are we at? 28 billion. OK, but that's cut by a third almost. You were pushing almost 75 billion for the market cap of that company. Maybe that becomes a company that uh, one of the gaming companies might scoop up. Maybe Sony or somebody scoops up Roblox. Maybe Facebook scoops them up as they're a competitor in the metaverse, all right? Nonetheless, growth companies pulling back. I mean, a company like Zoom, my goodness. Uh, you don't have to put a, put a Fibonacci chart on this one, man. You are basically back to almost COVID lows. Uh, in April, you were trading at a price point of 125.88. Look at that. Now that is the weekly, and that's the that's the high of that low bar there on a weekly basis at 125 from 588. Zoom makes money, folks. You get a longer term perspective, you could begin scaling into that equity for sure. Roku, I would say the same thing. Uh, Roku, let's put it on a daily. Okay, down to 102. You're up to 120, 166. Again, I'm not calling for the lows in these folks because the market may trade lower. If the market trades lower, all these companies are going to get punished that have been punished before. But if you have the ability to give it some time and potentially scale into these, you leave yourself some openings to scale in at a lower price. 
I think we're at some levels that are pretty attractive on these. Now, Roku, you're talking about a company valued at $16 billion at this price point, okay? I see tremendous value in that, folks, context-wise, okay? Yes, they have competitors, okay? But they have quite the stronghold on access to streaming. And you think about the, the value of the companies that are competing for streaming eyeballs, Roku's entire market cap is $16 billion, okay? Apple swings $16 billion, folks, every single dollar it moves. Did you know that? Yeah. Every dollar that Apple moves, $16. They basically just lost $16 billion in the last 15 minutes of trading, uh, six minutes of trading. You were up to 166.15, you gave up 90 cents, lost $16 billion in market cap, okay? It's important to understand that when you think about the company like Roku and it's valued at $16 billion. Because in the context of where this company is going to be, yes, there's a possibility that they mismanage their company, they spend too much, their growth is not what it used to be, maybe they mismanage their debt, and maybe they go BK. Roku is not Amazon, they do not need to exist in the future if you invest in it. Yeah, that's a company that's a growth company. I believe they've cemented themselves as being a player in the future, but they're not cemented to the point that an investment portfolio, you could think that they are gonna be around in the future because Roku may not. But you know what else might happen? Somebody may buy them to basically, now, anti-competitive would come into a play in a big way. You know, you get a company like Amazon with the Amazon Fire, the Fire Stick, and now they control the Roku and basically they control everybody that accesses streaming, that might not fly. But they have quite the access for 15 to $16 billion right now and you're down from 490 to 120. Folks, we got like four or five of them in my house. And I know I'm biased because of that probably, but they're gonna be around, they are. All right, let's jump around to what else we got going on. We got some more companies besides Lowe's out with their numbers. Uh, Tupperware, their down following quarterly earnings. Adjusted profit of 38 cents, they missed by 14 cents. Challenging operating conditions. Uh, saw top and bottom line growth despite those challenges. Yeah, market doesn't care about that. How much did you make and how is it going to go going forward? They're a little bit worried that they're not managing things as they well as they could have. You pull back from 38 bucks to 16, man, um, down to a buck at the COVID lows. There's a pullback for you for Tupperware. And you know what? I'm going to jump to this story in terms of China. And we're going to tease this a bit. We're going to Talk to our man, Teddy Cakestat, coming up after the break, and then we'll finish up the show with this. Because you're going to see these trends continue, folks. I mean, China talks about this, okay? The number of cases going up on these ships and the, and the zero tolerance policy in China, these problems are going to persist, folks, okay? Um, I want to get into some of the actual statistics as we tease this here. Delays. 114% China to the U.S. West Coast, surging in 2021 compared to 2020. I'll get into it. I'll get into it at the final end of the program. But it's important to think about this. Things are going to persist. Um, China's tightened quarantine requirements for vessels, folks. It's going to delay supply chain stabilization. We'll see it. Companies exposed to China, problems are going to persist, I imagine, for this year. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Teddy Kegstat. We'll talk some commodities, crude oil, Forex. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. 
David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now, positive by 27 points, trading at 43.26. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday, folks, at 1040, uh, excuse me, 940 in the morning. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. What do you want to Boy, talk so about first? We've had a few uh, events across the globe and the oil market and the commodity and the, um, excuse me, Forex market over the last week. Uh, why don't you give us your take, Teddy, on what's going on with the Russia, Ukraine, and maybe how that's hitting crude and the Forex market to begin with. And then we'll go into the other factors maybe of what's going on. Uh, it's actually a great day to talk about that because you know how we've been uh, for the past year now, we've been using crude as a kind of a variable for which way a lot of the currencies are going to go okay uh now it's going to have a much different factor so you got to remember that the, that the the oil market is based in u.s dollars and also in euro dollars so as we impose these sanctions on russia and all these things start to change around europe and stuff as far as the delivery of gas and oil and things like that coming out of russia or where they do go um this is going to have a big influence on the currency markets so uh as far as you got to remember where we're at in this position, this is Russia versus the NATO countries. So certain countries are not gonna be affected and impacted as much in, in as far as strength or weakness in the dollar as some other currencies are, okay? So now I would be very cautious as far as being a dollar bull right now. I think you're gonna still remain with the, with the US dollar yen doing that. Um, but outside of that, now, especially with Australia opening up, you know, uh, the dollar is going to get very weak versus the Australian dollar. Um, New Zealand dollar, I think, is, is riding the coattails of Aussie right now. Um, I would be very leery until they start to open up more of their restrictions. This, this I don't think their rally is going to be as strong as what you're going to see in the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar over the next literally week or two. Um, when that moves, the Aussies can be a lot like the pound. Like it gets a very, very over extended at over exacerbated to trend you know and i think that right now you have a balloon underwater rally going on right now and as far as how much velocity it's going to get the more this is situation with the russia ukraine is going to definitely fuel this stuff okay so it's going to be big for china because now one of their biggest core commodity producers is going to be back online and shipping and getting things back towards a, a normal if you will whatever that is um but it, it is going to accelerate because they were basically at a stop okay so for that area of the world you're going to see a lot of dollar weakness okay especially with the aussie 
it's going to be a very lot of divergence for that region. Now, as far as the euro, the pound, and the Swiss, it's Swiss cheese right now. We've been talking about how it's been sideways for a couple of weeks. We're going to get a breakout. Okay. Now we have to look at how things. Are. Remember, we had Brexit. Okay. The UK now has their sovereignty. Okay. So, and they're also not impacted by energy the way the EU is. So the question is, is how are how are these players going to work together? Um, not just against Russia, but also for themselves. You know. So now there's a lot of issues between the UK and also um, the EU. You know. So now is it are they going to drop their, you know, differences, if you will, between themselves um, and work towards at least one fundamental goal, which is defending or you know acting against Putin? I don't know. That's going to be a very big thing to try and figure out, especially because look at the COVID restrictions. The UK is now dropping all their COVID restrictions. The EU is not, you know, so where that pans out, I think that the euro US dollar could trend, stay where it's at and go sideways to lower the pound. We've talked about this before. I think you might see that actually break out to the upside. And as far as the Swiss, I, I, I don't see that really going anywhere right now. You know, I really don't. I think you're going to be caught in this range that we've been in for the last six months. That's a great uh, wraparound to, to many different variables going mm -hmm. on in that market, man, when we got potential war out there. Uh, just looking at, you know, the, the things playing out from, from a very far distance of, of mm -hmm. not digging too deep. I don't understand the situation as well as many, right? But what I do understand mm -hmm. is it's probably going to persist for some time as intentions over there are pretty high um, mm -hmm. no matter what. Do you see this just kind of being a continuing thing? Because I don't know how there's a resolution when you have something like Putin going out there land mm -hmm. grabbing, right? It's like that's not a, something that's going to resolve in, in the immediate future. I mean, oil right. prices, currency, you know, influences. I just see that as a pretty present, you know, factor for at mm -hmm. least the foreseeable future over there with a little sure. bit of, you know, instability, at least to say the lightest, you know, at, at a mm -hmm. minimum. Yeah, well, this is going to be the, the biggest focus right now. Um, I, I mean, I've been saying that after the Olympics, that's when China goes after Taiwan. That's when Putin starts to kick up his heels. However, we're playing into Putin's hand right now. We've shown all our cards. We have been doing that for a past couple of weeks. This situation didn't start a month or two ago. This has been going on now for months as far as conflict in the Ukraine, okay? So it's not like all of a sudden Ukraine is under pressure. They've been under pressure since the summertime, okay? And things have just finally come to a big boil. You know, if, if Putin was to back off and pull all his troops all the way back to Moscow, it's not gonna change what's going on in the Ukraine, okay? Sure. There's still all kinds of infighting you have. You gotta realize there's four factions in, in the Ukraine. You have the controlling political party, most of which is in hiding, okay? Then you have the people who just wanna have Ukraine. They don't want Putin and they don't want the leadership they have now. They wanna have a free democracy, which they don't have, and that's what they're fighting for. Then you have also the Russian separatists that wanna have the Soviet, or what was the old Soviet Union, come back, okay? So those three factions are clashing and then you also have the neo-Nazi movement that's also there. So you have four factions that are fighting each other, and now you add the Russian influence. Okay, so it's you know no war can you can't have a fight a two war a two front war and be able to exist. The Ukraine has a multiple front war that it's fighting inside itself. You know, so this is not going yeah. away. It's not. I mean, Putin, like I said, he can back off, disappear. It would not change a thing. The Ukraine is up for grabs. That whole region is up for grabs, you know. And then as far as, you know, NATO is the one that broke all the, they're the ones that broke the treaties first, you know. So, I mean, we should not, they should never have been where they were at. Would that change a thing? Would that mean that Putin, if Putin would have moved in first, then that would have been something for NATO to do. You know, they should have done sanctions beforehand instead of doing what they're doing now. We're, we're being reactive, and that's why I said we're playing into Putin's hand. You know, like I, I've listened to a lot of people that like he shouldn't be on the world stage. He's a stooge. Um, well, I don't like the guy, but anyone that thinks that, one, you know, like it or not, Russia is a world power. 
you know, for the last like, especially five years, the, the, the West has tried to denounce them. Well, you can't denounce a country that has 14 time zones. You know, I mean, it's just and it's that big. Yeah, I listen, mean, I don't know anybody actually yeah. that's called Putin a stooge. And if they do, I don't so, think that's the right call. <laughs> He's an no. ex KGB, probably bright and brilliant and just uh, a right. very bad person. Um, Absolutely. With a lot of power and a lot of nuclear weapons and a lot of people right. and a lot of land. He's like the guy um, with the cat from a James Bond movie. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Sometimes they so. can be smart, even if they're evil, man, which is sure. the real bummer of That's it all. The scary, right. Exactly. Right. So, well, but we'll be Teddy talking Man, about it's always an adventure week to week. I imagine where mm -hmm. we're going to be next Wednesday. Uh, and as we wrap it up here, we got crude at 92.35. You see a test in the highs recently, or are we going to test maybe those lows uh, like 85, 80 bucks? Where, where are we going, going higher? We're going to keep higher prices. pressing on. All yeah. right, man. Teddy, thank babies. you so much for the segment. We appreciate it. Great. We'll talk to you next week, man. Absolutely. Take care. Okay. Stay tuned, folks. I'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, positive by 17 points. I got Virgin Galactic up there, Space, SPCE. They're out with their numbers up 14%. I would not touch this equity, folks. Uh, talk about a dead cat bounce right off the lows of 758. You're up a buck oh nine, up 14%. But man, percentages on small numbers can be deceiving sometimes. Uh, I would stay away. Jumping back to the China story I talked about. Some of the statistics here to keep in mind as they're talking about Omicron ripping through the cargo ships may exacerbate shipping woes. Couple statistics here, okay? They're talking about uh, one gentleman, Francesco Giorgiello, uh, CEO of International Maritime Employers, represents shipping companies. Uh, an active crew of about 16,000 seeing infections in five to seven vessels a month compared to only one or two a month last year. Uh, then you have another ship management company has had infections in four of its ships since January after less than a dozen for the whole year in 2021. Uh, yeah, you have another person, Mark O'Neill, CEO of Columbia Ship Management, 15,000, a few of its ships struck down. You'll probably see the number of vessels worldwide affected increasing for sure because it's so contagious. Uh, you have whether it's supply chains already in trouble. Now, most cases are mild. OK, but you have to quarantine the entire vessel sometimes for as long as two weeks. You talk about China, a single seafarer test positive, the entire ship is quarantined. Vessels stopping in China must have been COVID free for at least three weeks. On top of that, crew changes in China are still near impossible for foreign seafarers. That's a very difficult landscape to navigate, folks. Uh, you add that into everything, the, the delays, West Coast, China to the U.S. West Coast, delayed versus 2020. Folks, there were huge delays in 2020. 2021, up big numbers. And you see, if you're aware of the Omicron spread, you're aware of China's zero policy, folks, you know, no the whole ship gets quarantined. You got to be quarantined, you know, COVID free for three weeks on a ship that big. Very difficult. Um, so keep your eye on that. Companies dealing with supply chains from China, they may have a tough year coming up. Stay tuned, folks. Basil Chapman, he's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Live programming all day at TFNN. We got the S&Ps up 19, NASDAQ 100 up 51. We got some interesting companies with earnings. After the bell tonight, you're going to get Bath & Body Works, Live Nation, get bookings holdings stay tuned folks basil's up next we'll be right back